Hey friends, today we're gonna to be reviewing the RTX 2080 Super from our friends Palette. This is their Game Rock White Edition. We're gonna be talking about that after we talk about today's video sponsor, which is The Ridge, my friends. The Ridge makes sleek, minimalistic products that are for everyday use, including wallets, including backpacks, battery banks, what have you. They have plenty of different products on their website for you to check out. And if you use our link in the video description, ridge.com forward slash UFD and enter the coupon code UFD, you'll get 10% off your order and free worldwide shipping. And I mean, friends, why wouldn't you want sleek, minimalistic wallets? I mean, you slim down everything that you have. They're connected by a nice strap that allows you to keep everything together, but not too much in your wallet. You can have a cash strap, you have a money clip, and they're made out of real metal, or in this case, carbon fiber. It's gorgeous. They're gorgeous. You should check them out at the link in the video description. Again, coupon code UFD. Slim down your wallet. Don't carry around big, thick things. Carry around something sleek and minimalistic. Front pocket wallets designed for you. And I have my daily carrier of the Ridge backpack. I use this all the time. So you can get one of those too. Down below, link, UFD. 10% off, worldwide shipping. Anyways. So last week we covered Palette's RTX 2070 Super. I actually really enjoyed this one, the Jetstream version. The cooler was freaking fantastic. It is capable of handling everything that you throw at it. Temperatures never really reached above 65 degrees Celsius. And now they decided to send over the Game Rock uh, Platinum, as they call it. Or as the, the box says, the Game Rock Limited Edition 8 gigabyte WGRP, which stands for white, Game Rock Premium. And this seems to be actually one of the most premium cards and handles some of the issues that I've had with Palette's designs, at least on the previous Jetstream cards that we've taken out, which is primarily they finally fixed the RGB because on things like the Jetstream, they had RGB, but it was always a static color. And if you were trying to change from one to the other, it would just kind of harshly get there rather than flow. And finally, they've implemented their new iRGB system, which allows this front area to light up and actually look gorgeous. This is probably one of the best looking cards out on the market right now. If you consider the front, if you consider the side, or the back, what you get is a knockoff Guitar Hero logo, which admittedly looks good while illuminated, but also, I'm, I'm sorry, Palette, but it screams copyright infringement. Like, you're, you're stealing somebody's font here. And this is like, I, I understand that's what you're getting at, but at the same time, Guitar Hero died like a decade ago. So, like, you're not, you're not helping anybody with this promotion, at least not anybody that I know would buy it based off of its rockin' fonts it's not it's not a thing however what you will buy it off of is that look if you have a vertical mounted gpu this section absolutely gorgeous this card looks phenomenal way better than what i think the reference editions look like and it also performs pretty decently too so let's go ahead and get on into the benchmarks unfortunately the only rtx 20 series card that i've never had my hands on was the 2080 just never got one. I have a 2070, 2080 Ti, 2060, but never got a 2080. So I unfortunately cannot compare this to the RTX 2080. I can compare it to the RTX 2070 Super and I can compare it to the 1080 Ti, but I cannot do any sort of 2080 comparison, at least for now. So what we're gonna look at is its stock performance as well as its overclocked performance, compare it to itself as well as to the 1080 Ti. And if we take a look at stock performance, what you'll see is that at, at 1440p ultra, we're over 60 FPS in every modern title. We're over 120 FPS in most major games. Um, and in fact, what we've found was that no adjustments to the fan curve. What we hit was 71 degrees Celsius on the GPU, but then we had average clocks of 1,925 megahertz, which is quite good straight out of the box, almost to two gigahertz. It's not quite as good as the Super Jet Stream. The cooler is actually a little thinner, as you guys can see, like they're just, they're slightly, slightly, not the same. The higher TDP of the 2080 caused it to run a little higher and clocks go a little lower, but it also has the 2080 Super's 15.5 gigabit per second memory setup. So it actually performed pretty remarkable. And then if we switch over to 4K Ultra, we're nearly at 60 FPS in most AAA titles. Actually, quite a few of them were under 60. Uh, the worst one being Metro Exodus. It's just, it sucks. But also Assassin's Creed Odyssey, 41 FPS average at 4K Ultra. So if if you were gonna wanna play 
4K, 60 FPS, and that's your setup, 2080 Ti is still definitely the way to go. However, overclocking, that's where we also get some pretty key improvements on the 2080 Super, just like we did with the Jetstream. We were able to hit plus 70 megahertz on the core with the 2080 Super Game Rock. And over a 1.5 gigahertz increase on the memory. I don't know what GDDR6 they chose to use in this, if I got a special bin sample, but we were able to get our memory from 15 and a half gigabits per second to 18 and a half gigabits per second on this thing. It's crazy. So after overclocking, what we saw at 4K Ultra, we saw an average improvement of around 8% in all of the games that we had. Unfortunately, that actually didn't put us above 60 FPS in any game besides Middle Earth Shadow of War, which was already at 59.3 to begin with, and we got it up to 65.3. But everything else, if it was already below 60 FPS at 4K Ultra, the highest overclock we can manage still wouldn't get us above that. 4K high, you would definitely be fine, but 4K Ultra is a no-go when it comes to the 2080 Super. And if we just want to take a look at comparison uh, the 2080 Super versus the 2070 Super at 1440p Ultra, what we find is that the 2080 Super is on average about 10% faster, but that is also again coming at a price increase of $200 to get 10% more performance. But then if we go ahead and take a look at the overclocked performance of the RTX 2070 Super, which in case you don't remember the review from last week, we were able to get plus 100 on the core, plus another 1.5 gigahertz on the memory for 2,085 megahertz on this core and 17 gigabits per second on the memory. We actually come roughly within like one to four percent of the 2080 super on this 2070 super jet stream this overclocked card nearly nearly matches the stock performance of this aib reference model 2080 super which at a value proposition of 200 dollars increased doesn't make a lot of sense the 2080 super just not really coming in all that hot and heavy to kind of knock out the uh 2070 super here so by its own basis of even comparing it to Palette's own cards, the 2080 Super is a weird value proposition. Obviously, if you overclock the 2080 Super just like you would the 2070 Super, you're gonna be a little bit further ahead, again, probably putting you back in that 10% region. But if you're not somebody who wants to overclock, wait, no. That would be weird if you did want to overclock a 2070 Super, but you didn't want to overclock a 2080 Super. Either way, it's probably not a great idea to pick up a 2080 Super at its value proposition. And I've seen a lot of comparisons as well on the internet of this card being compared to the 1080 Ti. And we went ahead and did some 4K testing just to see if the extra three gigabytes of GDDR5X on the 1080 Ti mattered. And the 2080 Super is anywhere from eight to 17% faster than the 1080 Ti. So 2080 Super is still definitely better than the 1080 Ti, but like less than 10% on average after over two years between the two. Not really great advancement from NVIDIA here. And also it's just a really weird launch in general, especially if you compare it to the 2070 Super. The 2070 Super seems to be the only Super Series card that makes any sense. It has decent value when you compare it to Navi. It's not exactly the best value card that you can get on the market, but at least it's not something that's gonna hurt your wallet unnecessarily, if that makes sense. The 2060 Super obviously costs the same as the 5700 XT, but the 5700 XT blows it out of the water. So uh, it's a weird one. The 2070 Super is in a price cast of its own and a performance class of its own, whereas the 2080 Super is in a really saturated price class of the 1080 Ti RTX 2080 and Radeon 7, and then it doesn't really live up to any sort of performance. However, the 2080 Super from Palette does a lot to actually help out the 2080 Super's cause. I mean, one, freaking gorgeous. Look at this thing. Look at, look, look at the card, it's amazing. Number two, uh, it, the thermals were great. The out of the box performance were great. If you're picking up a 2080 Super and that's what you have your heart set on, which would I would highly advise you against, just pick up a 2070 Super, overclock it and get the best value. Um, if you are set on it, I cannot actually highly recommend the Game Rock enough if you can get past the uh, Guitar Hero font, which might turn some people off. And just quickly to go over the rest of the features of the card, there's things such as a dual BIOS switch, you have performance mode and then you have silent mode, or you have OC mode and standard mode, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the 
standard mode has a zero dB fan setup so that the fans don't spin unless it gets above 60 degrees Celsius. It has a 10 plus two power phase setup so it actually can deliver all of the power quite effectively. It has five copper heat pipes, which those are some pretty thick boys, appears to be roughly the same cooler that is on the Super Jet Stream. It is a beast of a card. If you're picking up a 2080 Super and you've already have your heart set on it, I can say, get this one. But if you're thinking about your wallet and you're thinking about what performance you should have and you're thinking about, hmm, how do I get 2080 Super performance without spending that kind of money? 2070 Super and overclock it, my friends. That's gonna be my recommendation today. Anyways, let me know what you think of the Palette WRGP, GRP. What do you think of the Palette WGRP White Game Rock Premium card? I want to hear from you down below in the comments. What do you think of the 2080 Super? What do you think of the Super Launch overall? Let me know down below. Don't forget to check out today's video sponsor, which is The Ridge. If you want sleek, minimalistic, everyday products, go to ridge.com forward slash UFD, enter your coupon code UFD to save 10% off your order, plus free worldwide shipping, no matter where you are on this planet, free worldwide shipping. Okay, I'm getting out of here. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. See you in the next one.